Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, uh, thank you all very much for uh, being here this afternoon. I'm very excited indeed to be able to, uh, uh, to welcome our guest speaker this afternoon, uh, Mr. Jorge Mori, um, who was for uh, some years um, a, uh, the, the Mainichi, the, uh, the, the Mainichi Shinbun's correspondent uh, in the Kunaicho. Uh, and uh, <coughs> he was doing so at a time where um, I think he will agree uh, the uh, affairs of the uh, imperial family um, were not uh, necessarily top of the agenda, but uh, in the years that followed, uh, they really became the focus not just uh, in Japan, but also around the world of the different um, the different questions that uh, befell the, this, uh, this most ancient of uh, families uh, and the difficulties of uh, conjoining that with uh, the modern world and uh, issues, for example, of uh, whether you could have uh, female succession and, uh, and so on and so on. Um, one might look at the imperial family at the moment and think, um, that these are happy times, that uh, wedding bells are in the air uh, for the emperor's uh, granddaughter, uh, and that uh, he himself can look forward to a uh, happy retirement after many years of tireless public appearance. Um, but underneath all that, there is, of course, as ever, great complexity. Um, and we are extremely fortunate, as I said, that uh, Mr. Mori can join us today to talk us through those. Now, what will happen uh, is that there'll be a speech that he's making in English, uh, and then after that, uh, time for some questions which uh, um, can be asked in either language, but that he will uh, answer in Japanese with uh, very kind interpretation. Uh, our interpreter here has uh, been learning a glossary of imperial words so that uh, nothing will confuse her, um, and uh, we're all very fortunate for that. So uh, without uh, any more from me, uh, I could ask you, first of all, please to put your phone on mana mode and uh, including you, Mr. <laughs> Professor Murray, <laughs> yes, and, the, and, uh, and off we go. Thank you very much indeed. So the meeting? Yes. Um, hello, my name is Yohei Mori, and thank you very much for inviting me here, FCCJ. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, the, I'm now working at the Seijo University teaching the journalism and the um, modern Japanese history of the royal, uh, royal family. And the, before, I work for the uh, Mainichi and the CNN.co.jp and the Ryukyu Shinpo Kino newspaper. Uh, topics I have asked to speak here are the future of royal family, especially the abdication and the Im female imperial branch. Since I have only 30 minutes, let's begin. Firstly, abdication. Uh, first of all, please look at the uh, genealogy family tree. And Emperor Akihito, he, he is now 83 years old and Michiko 82, and his son, Crown, Princess, uh, Crown Prince Naruhito, 56, and Prince Masako, 53. And he has a, uh, they have a daughter, daughter, Aiko, only one daughter. She's 15. And Naruhito has the uh, brother, Princess, Prince Akishino, He's 51, and he and his wife has three ch children. The senior one is th this woman, Princess Mako, 25 years. She just, uh, an she's announced to marry next year. And the next daughter, 22 years old, Kako, and the last one, Princess Hisahito, he's the five, five, five grader, fifth grader, 11 years old. Uh, timeline, <coughs> just review. Uh, last year, August 8th, message from the Akihito to express his intention. Uh, he said, a major, the first sentence of the statement, he said, major milestone year 
marking the seven, 70th anniversary of the end of the World War II, the, the, the year of 2015, has passed. And in two years, we will be welcoming the 30th year of the Heisei. So the first sentence, he indicated the Heisei Sanju, 30 years of Heisei. Uh, this is a very good hint. Um, uh, <clears throat> and also, uh, June 9th this year, special law for the abdication passed by Diet. The after abdication, what gonna happen? Emperor Akihito obviously uh, gonna become the abdicated emperor. In Japanese, it, it is the Joko. Ko, jo, Ue, the maybe the above tenno or uh, ue, ue no tenno, uh, superior tenno. <laughs> I don't know, but the <coughs> uh, Kunaicho said this is not show the hierarchy. No, the, 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 the <laughs> status is the <laughs> uh, nanda vertical. Chiga na equal. Crown Princess Naruhito became emperor, obviously, and the Prince Akishino, <coughs> his brother, uh, Naruhito's brother, uh, he became the imperial heir, Koshi. Uh, this is the de facto crown prince, but the, no, actually he is not de facto crown prince. Crown prince, he is not. He gonna be. He will not be a uh, crown prince. This is just a little bit complicated. Because uh, the crown, crown prince should be the son of the emperor. And <coughs> we have two plan. I just named the plan A and plan B. Plan A is original. Uh, someday in December, Maybe f between 24th to 31st of the next year, abdication and enthronement, and the the first day of the, the first day of the uh, 2019 change of Japanese era, Gengo. This is original plan. But the imperial family, uh, imperial household agency, Kunaicho, strong, strongly uh, opposed the idea. And they present this plan B, uh, insisted by, uh, this is plan B. Um, March, 30, March 31st, 2019, abdication and instrument, and the April 1st, April full day, <laughs> change of the Japanese era, Gengo. Um, Why the Japanese imperial family opposed the plan A? Because, um, as you are aware, the first day of the uh, new year, the emperor are very busy. Uh, we have the, they have the new year greeting ceremony, Shinnen Shukuganugi. This is a state event. Akihito and, Akihito and Michiko meet these kind of people, including the uh, foreign ambassadors, the last sentence. This happened from the morning to evening. And after this greeting, they moved to the another room and they are served Japanese sake. And maybe the hundred or a thousand people in, uh, go into the palace. Um, actually, actually, um, Kunaicho are uh, every, every year very busy. And next year, we have the <coughs> uh, General Congratulatory Palace Visit. This is not only once, the actually seven times a day. And they just shake hands, but, <laughs> uh, but they are very busy. There are another kind of the uh, 
uh, many ceremony from first first day of the new New Year's and until seventh of January. So uh, New Year's are very bu busy, and the end of years they are busy in preparation. And also uh, they have the December. Uh, December 23rd, the emperor, emperor, emperor's birthday. Also, uh, this is a very busy day. So, as I said, maybe between 21st Christmas to the, the end of the year, 31st, abdication happens. <coughs> um, why this is important? Here we have to consider the relations of the cabinet and the imperial household agency. The Article 3 of the Japanese Constitution states the advice and approval of the cabinet shall be required for all acts of the emperor. And this this chart shows that the Imperial Household Agency is under the control of the Cabinet Office. However, Imperial Household Agency, Kunaicho, tend to act autonom autonomous, <laughs> autonomously because it thinks, emperor, it thinks or it considers Imperial system should be out of politics. On the other hand, Cabinet does not hate uh, doesn't hate the situation that imperial household agency is out of its control. Sorry, um, cabinet hate the situation the imperial household agency is out of their control. So whether plan A or B, it doesn't matter you for impress sitting here, for impress who's <laughs> sitting here. <coughs> this is just three months differences, but please remember that there are the intra-government conflict within the government. Uh, regarding to the actual decision of the timing of that uh, abdication, Imperial Household Aid Council should be held. Uh, you don't, you don't know, maybe you don't know the, uh, this organization, the Imperial Household Council, Koshitsukai. This, <coughs> So this, uh, this organization should be held. Uh, this is stated in the new application law. But what is this organization? This, uh, this is a member of the council. The first two, the Prince Akishino and Prince Hanako, are the imperial family members. And the, those four people in yellow cells are the leader of the legislative branch. And the next two, Shinzo Abe and the Yamamoto, <laughs> is obviously um, executive branch members. And the last two in red, red cells are the leaders of the judicial organization. This organization is very strange. It is out of the fund fundamental principle of the three power separation. This is ne neither legislative organization, nor executive organization, nor judicial organization. In addition, imperial family members are included, although Japanese constitution restricts imperial family member to any involvement, involvement of the political decision. Why this kind of organization exists? Essentially, any decision regarding imperial affairs should be decided by the diet members. Diet should be, should be decided. However, um, new imperial household law was di discussed after the World War II in 1946. Any um, Some argue that they do not want the president of the lower house members to involve the, involve the imperial affairs. Thus, this kind of strange organization was created. 
But recently, the issue of this organization is not argued in Japanese politics or Japanese journalism. But for me, this is not democr democr democratic. <coughs> By the way, um, meeting of the Imperial Household Council, Koshikagi, was scheduled to be held on, actually on September 4th. But uh, and then, at that time, schedule of the application should be announced on that day, September 4th. But the meeting was postponed. It will be scheduled after the lower house election, presumably behind, uh, presumably November or December. <coughs> behind the postponement, there could be the pressure from the cabinet to Kunaicho to carry out Plan A. Uh, however, the feasibility of the Plan A is still be being studied in the Kunaicho, I suppose. Anyway, you may understand the conflict between the cabinet and the Kunaicho. Uh, next, let's discuss the what abdication, what Joko uh, abdicate emperor and the empress will do, and where they live. Firstly, what they gonna do? The special law of the abdication does not state duty of the abdicated emperor, Joko. So no one knows what they're going to do. But I think they will not involve any official affairs because they may refrain from doing so. They do not want to disturb new emperor and emperor, empress. But for example, they may attend the opening ceremony of small art ex exhibition, maybe coming here to have a press conference, I don't know, or to demonstrate, or they may demonstrate something, to do something to show all the people must have something to live for. I don't know. <laughs> Secondly, the issue of where they live. <clears throat> Nowadays, Akihito and Michiko live in the Emperor residence. This is a oh, we around here, Yurakcho, and they live here. And the Crown Prince live here, residence of the Crown Prince, Crown, Crown Prince, Togu Gosho. According to the news, news, uh, news report, they switch, they're gonna switch the residence. And the um, Prince Akishino lived a small, much smaller house here. Um, they, uh, he may remain the residence, the blue circle. The issue, uh, like that, <laughs> uh, this Crown Prince residence in Akasaka, I think it is too big for retired emperor and empress to live. For example, it has huge dining room, which more than 100 people could be invited. Also, there are many rooms for official duties. It seems to me that this residence should be used for new de facto crown prince, Akishino. He now, as I said, he now lives in this smaller house in Blue Circle. Uh, <clears throat> Imperial Household Agency said, said that the, this Akishino's residence will be extended dramatically. It costs money. <laughs> Maybe Akihito, uh, Emperor, and Michiko prefer the quiet life and prefer a smaller house. However, to maintain their dignity, Kunaicho cannot realize their intention to live quietly. By the way, Kyoto city government recently tried to lobby to invite abdicated emperor to as residents to Kyoto. I think it, it is impossible because it costs a lot, which retired couple do not want. 
its extra, extra expenditure. <coughs> In addition, according to the Sankei Shimbun on April 29th, Imperial Household Agency plan to maintain current 80 personnel to personnel to direct, directly serve Akihita and Michiko. Uh, currently, uh, Ch chamberlain members. Chamber members, uh, they have the 80 chamberlain. And the etto, Naruhito and Masako, they have 50. And the Akshino family, they have only 20. Then, um, Kunaicho insists this 80 should be maintained. And this 50 should go up to the 80. This is um, reasonable because the same numbers. And Akishino residents should go up to the 50. This is also and, uh, uh, this is also reasonable because the same numbers. But totally, um, plus 30 and plus 30, the 60 personnel will be increased. This is the Sankei Shimpun report. Only Sankei report that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know this is the correct uh, report. <coughs> the reason for the maintenance of the 80 people of the Chamberlain, although they will, although Emperor and, uh, Michiko and Akihito will not do any official duty, um, according to Kunaicho, private event may be increased. <coughs> In any country, bu bureaucratic organization use any opportunity to enlarge its authority and to increase its personnel. This is a good example for the bu bureaucratic bad behaviors. The issue is Japanese newspapers do not criticize the government plan for this. This is extra expenditure for advocation. I think um, the <coughs> uh, this couple, current emperor, should be moved to the smaller house because they do only their private private affairs, not official duty. And Akishino should be moved to the <coughs> uh, Crown Prince resident in Akasaka. But no newspaper report or criticize that. <coughs> um, this kind of the uh, uh, purse of the emperor, which I wrote more than ten years ago, I discussed in that in that book. But the Japanese newspaper do not explain or criticize or say this kind of the very very <coughs> nanda. Uh, <laughs> sensitive issue that the bad, bad um, tradition of Japanese newspaper, <laughs> I think. And the the female imperial branch family, and uh, September third this year, this month, engagement of Prince Marco and Kei Komuro. And this is another <coughs> uh, family chart. I show I show this part before, but the, we have another families here. Uh, uh, Prince Akishino's, uh, no, Prince Mikasa line. Uh, they only have the women, no man here. The imperial house law only admits male to man to succeed the throne, chrysanthemum throne. And we have only five male in royal family. One, two, three, four, five. And as I said, he's 83, he's gonna retire. His brother, he's 81, too old. He's 56, he's 51. I'm 52, so they are very young. <laughs> uh, but it is impossible to have a new baby. I, 
because, oh, it's not because, she's 52, she's 51. And the only hope is Princess, Prince Hisahito here. So Princess Mako are here. <coughs> The giving up her royal status, so she gonna she gonna quit royal family next year. So what does it mean? It means government does not secure her life. Govern, government does not pay any money for her after she married. Currently, uh, 67 million yen a year is paid to total Akishino family. Here. That is the, uh, 600,000 US dollars. Do you think it's expensive or not? After marriage, Mako has to find a place to live with her husband. When she quit the imperial family, Surprisingly, 150 million yen will be paid one time to her for the reason to keep their dignity. This is 1.4 million US dollars. Usually, it is used to buy luxury apartment for secure its for sec for security. The security is more important. After marriage, she firstly will be entitled to vote. Vote to right, a right to vote. Currently, she has no official health, health insurance, and she does not pass, participate in social security. But after marriage, she has to join the pension system. That is, she will be becoming a common citizen. So first issue, if Hisahito can, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, so we are here. So what's gonna happen after 25 years later? What situation will be? In the year of the 2042, this, this guys probably pass away, not exist. <laughs> so only three male in royal family after 25 years. Emperor Naruhito, 82. And Akishino, 76. And this boy will become the 36. The first issue, the primary issue is if Hisahito can marry, it has been very difficult to find a new bride to the royal family. These two women, women are praiseworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, if Hisahito can marry a praiseworthy woman, the new couple have to have the at least one male baby, unless no successor to the throne. This will be, be the uh, critical moment to the Japanese monarchy. As I said, the current imperial household law restricts women to succeed the throne. So some argue that this, the restriction should be lifted. But things are not simple. We have to consider male line succession. Even when there is a senior sister here, <coughs> um, <coughs> younger brother succeeds the throne. And next succession is the same. The succession are, are linked uh, by the male line. This is called male line succession, Danke Sozok, Danke Keisho. Uh, the issue is not female emperor. A female emperor is okay for conservative 
if she had the male line linkage to the emperor. I mean, this woman is okay because they are linked to the father. This is the male line. She's okay, but these people are pro problematic because this is this is their uh, female line succession. <coughs> For example, Aiko's son. If Aiko remained in the imperial family and uh, married the son of Mr. A, um, becoming uh, Aiko becoming emperor is okay. But the, this boy, grandchild of the crown prince Naruhito, is a pro problem because this is the uh, female line succession. This boy seems to seems to Japanese people the grandson of the Mr. A, not the grandson of the uh, crown prince Naruhito. For example, if Mr. A is Shinzo, <laughs> this baby is considered as the Abe's family's grandchild. And if this male succeed, if this male succeed, this male, <coughs> this boy succeed the emperor, the royal throne could be considered to move from imperial family to Abe family. This is problem because this baby's relation to the emperor is linked by female line. <coughs> so this is a tradition, traditional concept of the Ie. <laughs> Obviously, young generation in Japan and even my generation do not regard this kind of the old Ie concept as important. However, there are some conservatives in Japan who tend to support Abe. They strongly oppose the idea of the female line succession. They consider the female line succession destroy the unbroken male succession. That is the Bansei Ikke Am. Here. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so some argue that we have to find male offspring, male offspring of former royal family members. In 1947, after World War II, 51 royal family members demoted from royal status to become commoner. We can find, find easily the grandchildren or grand, great grandchildren of former imperial family. For example, this guy, as y you may know, uh, Tsuneyasu Takeda. His grandfather is prin Princess Prince Takeda. Uh, he, he is the one of the male line successor of the former Emperor Brad. He is the TV personality, and his remarks are famous for their ethnocentrism and the populism. He is said he has by himself he has many women scandal. I don't think he is proper person for emperor. The another um, offspring in Brazil, there is another grandchild <coughs> of the former prince in Brazil. His name is Af Af Alfred Tarama. I don't know if he speaks Japanese. He also has a male linked bloodline. <coughs> Thus, the feasibility of the royal return of those imperial de descendants is very low, I think. I don't think it is impossible. In Japanese history, the separation of royal family and common citizen keeps the royal family's dignity. Uh, royal descendants have been a commoner for a long time, so I do not think Japanese nationalists, uh, Japanese na na nationals, uh, national citizens, accept their royal return. This kind of the royal return, I, for me, it seems to impossible. <coughs> so what will be the answer? <coughs> uh, genealogy again. <sighs> uh, 
please. Uh, plan for the female imperial branch is to allow only these three women, uh, Aiko, Mako, Kako, to stay in royal family. The another four are not allowed because they are too remote in blood from current emperor. As I said before, these three are male line female. The relation to emperor are linked by male. So for conservative, for, for these three remaining in emperor family is accept, accept, acceptable. This plan were considered within the Noda uh, administration in 2012, but Noda stepped down later same year. Noda's successor is Abe. Abe has stopped to pursue this plan. Obviously, Abe does not like the idea. In 2012, the reason to establish female branch are said something like that. Uh, this is the royal uh, Kunaicho's explanation. Royal family members are so busy, so female after their marriage should remain in the royal family and should share the burden. I think this is just official good official reason, and actual reason is behind the official reason. I think. The actual reason is to uh, actual reason to introduce female line. Uh, actual reason to <coughs> of the female branch is to introduce female line succession in the future. In the future, as I said before, in tw 25 years later, there will be only young man. There's only one young man, Hisahito unless female imperial branch are introduced. <coughs> Contrary, if female imperial branch are introduced, there could be sons of the Aiko, Mako, and or Kiko, uh, Kako. Those sons are female line males. Their succession to the throne will be problematic. But if Hisahito have no baby, this female succession could be an option. Or we have to, or Japanese people have to consider. June this year, uh, when special application law passed by, passed by diet, the law includes a provision to ask government to consider, consider if it should allow female family members remain in the imperial family after marriage. The uh, Minshito Democratic Party insisted those three words within one year should be included, but LDP strongly opposed the idea. Eventually, eventually these three words were omitted. This omission of deadline allowed to LDP government to ignore the uh, resolution, ignore the idea of the female branch. Conservatives are aware that female family branch will eventually lead to the female line succession, which they cannot accept. It is difficult for Abe, because he is supported by the conservative, to pursue the idea of the female branch, which could anger his support, the conservative supporters. Con Constitution amendment is more important for Abe to pursue. In my opinion, in my view, strong prime minister leadership is necessary to introduce female imperial branch. Next prime minister, I do not know who he or she is, may do this, but administrative change would not take place soon. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, it is sure enough that Prince Marco will quit the imperial family next year. It may be too late to ask her to stay. We have only Kako and I, Kako, Aiko and Kako. 
if the introduction, introduction female branch is seriously investigated soon. Here, you can observe <laughs> paradox of the Japanese conservatives. The more they stick to the male line succession, the more crisis of the emperor's succession they draw in. <laughs> On the other hand, liberals are actually not so eager to imperial matters. <coughs> they are very, op and the liberals are more op optimistic. Thus, only time passes, nothing changes. In this royal affairs, Emperor Akihito may be the only person who can demonstrate the, his leadership, which he is obviously res restricted by the <coughs> constitution. And conclusion, <coughs> uh, abdication, prime minister offers, uh, prime minister versus imperial family are uh, observed. <laughs> and Japanese journalists not criticize emperor and imperial household agency. Uh, female imperial branch families may not realize in near future. Um, uh, not the right di dilemma, uh, paradox of the com conservative. The end. Thank you. Any question, welcome. Uh, thank you very much indeed, um, Professor Mori. Um, fascinating. Uh, and uh, I hope some questions. Uh, as usual, uh, working press uh, have initial priority. Uh, and if uh, you could identify your affiliation, if you have one, uh, would be uh, first class. And as I say, it's going to the answer is going to come in Japanese and then be translated. So thank you. Anyone? Well, while we're waiting for people to come up with their questions, I just want to ask you, uh, Professor, when, um, when NHK broke the news that the emperor planned to uh, abdicate or that uh, this was a conversation uh, going on involving the uh, possibly the uh, cabinet office as well um, how surprised were you and how surprised were people who have been following this family for a long time that uh, that this announcement uh, was made I speak in Japanese Tenno power 権力も持っていないわけです。あの、政治に関することを発言してはいけないわけです。えっと、アブディケーションももちろん政治に関するまたですから、天皇自身が発言をするこの問題で発言をするっていうのは非常におかしなこと。これは私の意見ですけども、持
the, all this conservatism that we that we that you've talked about, and all this uh, reluctance to, uh, you know, to, to to be too flexible in certain elements of this. Do you think the Japanese public really care that much? Uh, they just want to see the emperor retire peacefully, don't they? Ano, いいですか。あのこのチャートを作ったんですけども、あのー。こうリベラルとコンサーバティブっていう軸があると同時にそのルールを重視するかあるいは天皇の意思を重視するかっていうあの別な軸があ,あるわけですそうするとあのコンサーバティブの中にあの保守の中にもあのルールが大事だとあの天皇が自分で退位するなんていうのはとんでもないと。神天皇って神様の子なんだから神様によって決まってるんだから天皇の意思なんかないんだっていう考えるとても保守的なあの極端な保守がいるんだけど大抵の保守っていうか宮内庁はこの辺にいて、まあ、まあまあまあとそうは言うけど天皇のご意思もあるよねみたいな言い方なんですね一般の人々っていうのはもともと戦争が終わった後天皇制っていうのは戦争の反省からあのルールで縛らなきゃいけないと。だからあの憲法ではいかなるオーソリティも認めていなかったわけです。リベラルな人たちは本当はあの本当はルールが大事だと、天皇の権力は縛られるべリストリクティってするべきだって考えたんだけど、どうも最近はあのこうリベラルの人たちこう下に降りてきて。いやいや天皇も人権が大事だよねとで天皇のあの気持ちも大事だよって変わってきたわけですだからあの対立というのはあ,あんまりいなくてその天皇の意思は大事だよねっていう考えるな中で保守的な人たちもあのリベラルの人たちもいてまあこの人たちはあの意外に同じ風な考えとか天皇のあのアブディケーションオッケーだオッケーだねって言ってるんですけども中には極端なとんでもないっていう人と、特に憲法学者なんかはここのディメンションにいるわけです。Well, the, I made this chart, and this there is the axis of liberal versus conservatives, and there's another set of axes. Those who put most much importance on the obeying the rules, and the other one is the other group is the the put more importance on the intention of the emperor. And uh, <clears throat> the some of the very conservative people who put the、uh, importance on the rule that they say that it's、uh, you know that the emperor does cannot exercise his intention. He is the son of divine, so therefore he cannot exercise any、uh, thing that、uh, based on his will. That's a very extreme opinion, and、uh, the, these days the Kunaicho or the Imperial Household Agency is here in between, and、uh, yeah, so th they say that there are rules. However, also we have to consider the intentions by the emperor himself. And、uh, Japanese people saw a lot of problems during the World War II caused by the past、uh, imperial imperial institutions. That's why the、uh, country decided to put the rule, to put the restriction on the authority, or the giving no authority to the emperor himself.、Um, <coughs> however, there are some. These days, some people say, say that, you know, however, the emperor should have his human rights, and in that regard, it's necessary to respect what he hopes and his intentions. And so, some conservatives, many conservatives and liberal people, are sharing that type of thoughts. And so, those people think that、uh, the abdi abdication、uh, while alive is okay. However, the some of the academics that the They are studying the con Japanese constitutions. Have very extreme opinion that ab abdication should not be allowed. I think there's a question in the front here. Yeah. Okay. So there's a mic coming out. You get some. Okay. Well, I think we need three lenses from Germany. Uh, why is it necessary? To, I have two, two questions.、Uh, why is it ne necessary for the retired emperor to have the same number of staff after retirement than now? 
uh, 80 people in a small, he has a small, uh, he will have a small house after uh, retirement. And why does he need uh, 80, 80, 80 people of uh, stuff? And other question, uh, after, what, what will, um, in, um, if um, the um, um, future emperor, perhaps, he will die in, t in perhaps in 20 years or so. Then it, me it does it mean Prince Akishino will be the next emperor or will his son be the emperor? <coughs> あの、私、うちの質問ですけれども、そもそも、ま、太陽なされた天皇にですね、ま、今と同じ数の、ま、自重、ま、スタッフをつけなければいけないと考えている理由は何なのかというのが一つ目。もう一つがですね、あの、
伺いたいと思います。あの最近はその浸透業界っていうべきかどうかわかんないですけど、その受け入れ化が進んでいるって話はよく聞くんですけど、その天皇の退位についてのその浸透の業界の意見。まあ、今後どうなるのかとかどうなってほしいのか先ほどはあのグラフの中にはあの一般人はおそらくこう思ってるでしょうその中ではその浸透業界はどういう立場なのかっていうのがぜひ聞きたいと思います。My, uh, my question is about the relationship between the emperor and the Shinto or Shinto industry and so I was told I heard that and the Shinto、uh, People are going toward more and more right wing these days, and then I'd like to know what their opinions about the abdication of the present emperor and what will happen in the future, what they will do about that in the future. And you said that the general public in, in Japan are supportive for that abdication, but that does that include the Shinto related,、uh, re affiliated people?、Uh, no. その神道っていうか右翼の人たちは非常にこう迷ったと思うんですけどもこのアブディケーションを支持するべきか反対するべきかと、えっとまあ、神道の基本的な立場とかに立つとやはり認めるべきではないんではないかというような考え方はあって、まあ、まだそう言ってる人もいるんだけども。まあ、あの天皇陛下がおっしゃってるし仕方がないというようなことで、まあ、今は修練しているんだと思いますただ女性宮家についてはあの彼らは非常に強く反対をしているということがありますあの質問には関係ないんですけどもあの私があの宮内庁担当だったのは90年代なんですけどもあるいはもっと前っていうか80年代にはもっとあの宮内庁に対する批判とか議論っていうのはもっとよくできたんですねただこの2000年代に入って以降を宮内庁についていろんな意見を戦わすっていうのはちょっとこの20年非常に難しくなっていますで。Uh, people uh, uh, related to the Shinto religion or the right wing people, I think they had a hard time to、uh, make d e c i s i o n on their stance. And、uh, based on the basic rule of the Shinto, I think they believed that、uh, they should not admit or allow the emperor to ab abdicate. However, the, they thought that the、uh, The, the emperor himself would like to retire or abdicate, so therefore maybe we should accept his intention. So then they are kind of settled these days. And however, they are still very strongly against the establishment of the female line、uh, family branches. And then also, my comment that this is not related to your question, however, that I was、uh, doing the correspondence、uh, covering the Imperial Household Agency in the 1990s, but、uh, before that, 1980s, it was easier for us to make the criticism or the discussion about the kunai, what Kunaicho or the Imperial Household Agencies were doing. However, since then, in the 21st century or the after 1990s, it's, it's Becoming more and more difficult to criticize them these days. Professor,、uh, with that, I think uh, we've uh, reached our time limit. But、uh, on behalf of the、uh, Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan and、uh, everyone in this room, particularly,、uh, we'd like to thank you very much、mm -hmm. indeed for、uh, attending today and for、uh, sharing your. Thoughts with us, and、uh, we'd like on behalf of the club to present you with this, which is the thank you,、uh, the honorary membership. So,、uh, thank you very much. You are、thank、always you welcome here and、uh, always welcome to talk to our thank、members. you very much for everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.